All right, so by request, uh, I'm going to look into this. So I, I wanted to take a look at it. What's making news in Canada today is that uh, there's a GM plant in Oshawa that's closing. But as part of a bigger picture, GM announced this morning that it would halt operations in plants in Detroit, Oshawa, Warren, Ohio, White Marsh, Maryland, and Warren, Michigan. This is, of course, uh, upsetting. All these plants make sedans that have waned in popularity, including the Chevrolet Volt, Impala, really the Impala's not selling, and the Cruze, Buick LaCrosse, Cadillac CT6, and XTS. GM said it will no longer make those cars. Now, the way that GM's phrasing it is this. They're looking to uh, maximize profits. So there's, there's two things I read into with this. One, they feel that these plants cost too much money and the rate of return isn't high enough. And two, if they ship some more of that, uh, that work somewhere else and automate it, they save a ton of money. Um, there's, there's an issue that we have with, with the, the, the economy in general. So we have a lot of these jobs that are sort of your, your old-fashioned jobs. Um, I know when I watch shows like... Um, um, Dragon's Den or uh, Shark Tank, and it's the same show, just different names, different side of the border, right? Um, you'll see an entrepreneur come in and say, I'm going to make this, and I'm going to sell it here. And the first thing they get asked is, where are you making this? And if they say, well, we're making it in the U.S., we're making this in Canada, the first thing they hear from one of the, the, the sharks or, or dragons is, uh, you should probably make this overseas so it's cheaper. Um, and, and that's just reality. That's just how that works. And then there's also the matter of, well, how many people are needed to make this? Is there a way to automate it and have a machine make it? And that's kind of where we're at. Now, there are some industries that have tried to automate everything. We're like, all right, we're going to automate the whole thing. And then they get all these machines in place. They go, yes. And then they can lay off people. And then they realize the machines break down. We need people to watch the machines and make sure they don't break down and know how to fix them. So we're going to need to hire some guys to come in. It might be some trades work that might be more expensive than the guys that we had doing the assembly line work in the first place. So it doesn't save them, I think, as much as they figure it would, but it still does save them money. Now, you know, I'm, I, on this issue, I, I feel awful for, in the case in Canada with the Oshawa plant, right? 2,500 people. The Oshawa union said, we're going to fight this. I don't think they can. Um, they, what fighting it will do is it will get them a buyout. They'll get some kind of a buyout from GM. GM will throw, uh, severance at people. Uh, it may find other work for people. Um, and, and the interesting thing is that, uh, uh, Prime Minister Doug Ford met with them apparently privately and they said the ship's already sailed. It's gone. It's done. There's no way you can stop the plant from closing. Um, the, the president of the United States comes out and says he talked to them as well and, and he's dismayed and he's disgruntled and he's, he's upset with what they're doing, but you can't really tell a business how to do its work. Now you can, uh, try to penalize them via tax tariff and this kind of thing based on, you know, the, the stuff being made overseas and shipped back. But in reality, there's a very limited number of things that can be done. Now GM's a huge plant. And, and GM was bailed out in 2008, famously, uh, by the, the American government when they were ready to go belly up. And now they're closing all these plants. So it's like 10 years ago, they get a bailout from the government, and they paid it back. They paid it back. But they get bailed out when they're, they're in their hour of need, and then 10 years later they're saying, ah, we're going to close up and try to make more money. That's how business works, though. Uh, as, as a businessman, you're always looking to make more money. You're always trying to find a way to, to cut corners and make an extra buck. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything that plant workers and unions can do other than uh, talk some, some kind of a severance package out of GM. Um, I don't think there's a way to, to save these jobs. I don't think there's a way to... Um, there may be some kind of a restructuring where they, they keep something open... But if all of these plants are connected to the same vehicles that GM saying we're not making these anymore, you have to talk GM into taking the, the equipment they're going to be making, the engines they're going to be making, the cars they're going to be making, and putting them in these plants. And that's a hard sell when they've already made that decision at an executive level that they're going to close them down. It's it's tough. Uh, it's, it's really hard. It, you know, I, I went through... Um, I know working in agriculture, there were always concerns that I had. Um, I know 
uh, from working with, with beef. You'd see some kind of a, a mad cow thing happen in Alberta and you go, oh, crap. And it, it affected us. It absolutely killed our hours for a while. Uh, I know I worked in poultry and you'd have, you know, the, uh, the, the avian flu show up and then you're out of work. I was very fortunate to get on my job before the avian flu hit that farm. And part of the reason I left was because I knew it was going to happen. Um, it, it is it, the, 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 the industries in, in, in agriculture, automotive, any assembly line type work and agriculture's assembly line is just awful. Um, I, although I used to refer to it as a disassembly line because you're kind of pulling all the meat apart and packaging it to send it back out. But, uh, it, you know, either way... Uh, it's it is a tough time right now because all of those businesses, agriculture, they're looking to replace workers with machines too. It makes it cheaper, um, and and that's where we're at. And that's why you know all this talk about coal industry coming back and all these industries coming back. It's tough because the entire economy has changed, so people are clinging to jobs that in some cases are not going to come back. So it's it's tough all around. I, I certainly hope that GM treats people properly on the way out because GM's making a lot of money. It's not like they're losing money altogether. So they can offer some kind of severance bailout to help people the way they were helped in 2008. And I hope that happens on both sides of the border. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey... Um, I mentioned, I put this on the Entertainment Guy channel because you know what? They're talking about self-driving cars and all of this stuff. And, you know, automobiles are kind of a major part of our lives. And the entertainment aspect, maybe that's part of the reason why they're looking high-tech and brand new and all the renewable energy and uh, different ways of manufacturing cars. And it's kind of hosing people along the way. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.